In this video, we're going to check the Steam Awards winners. Welcome to Streaming Deluxe. My name is still Mr. Orange. Welcome, my friends. This is the Steam Awards and this is the winner ed edition. So I was already making a couple of videos about the Steam Awards. I was showing you uh, how the system works. I was showing you uh, what uh, for which games I was voting. And yeah, finally, the the winners are out. So Steam Wolf was publishing them. And yes, let's be honest. <laughs> It's exactly the games, exactly the, those games were winning that we all expected they're going to win. So nothing special, no surprise, really no surprise. And I have to say, this is actually personally a disappointment and a bit boring. And for this reason, I think the Steam Awards or the whole event was was going a bit under, was was not getting a lot of publicity on Steam itself or or on some other PC games media, for example. Okay, my friends, but let's uh, jump into uh, into the winners and we go quickly through them. And uh, I'm going to give you my opinion about the games that won. And uh, and yeah, we're going to have a little chat. So, all right, <laughs> as you saw. Okay, it turned now green, so there's uh, definitely some problem with the codec. Doesn't matter. So Steam, Steam even made uh, made the live e event. I was not watching the live event, and then they made here a super nice video. I mean, check it out. Uh, you can, I'm sure you can find it also on YouTube somewhere. Uh, we're not watching it, so we go through those games here. So those were all the categories. So it was the game of the year. 2018 player unknowns battleground one hmm fantastic don't you think <laughs> i think it's a bit boring but of course i have to admit it was it was one of the most played games on twitch and is still one of the most played games on twitch and also it was very 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 popular here on steam so not a really big surprise then the vr game of the year the elder scrolls 5 skyrim vr and I absolutely agree. This is it's not a surprise. I was voting, I think, for Fallout 4 VR, but uh, or or even for the Elder Scrolls. Ah, yeah, I can see. All right, so yeah, also also not the biggest surprise, I would say. Okay, yeah, as you see, uh, my vote was uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey for the game of the year. I have to say that's a game I, I liked a lot, but I can totally understand that people were voting for Battlegrounds. And here the VR, VR game of the year, there you see The Elder Scrolls was my nomination, but in the end I was voting for Fallout 4 VR. Oh, and, uh, I think Skyrim VR is definitely one of the most anticipated uh, VR games that we, we got uh, in the whole VR generation. But on the other hand, I was uh, I was so much in the Fallout 4 VR phase, playing phase, and I'm still in the phase. And I think there's still so much content in this game that I want to experience. And uh, there's also mostly of this content I was not act I was not playing it in the in the regular version. I think it was an, it was a it was an easy to to win against uh, VR chat and super hot VR even that those games I'm sure are very good so I don't own I don't own uh, Beat Saber or super hot VR super S Beat Saber is like overwhelming positive it's it's like uh, one of the most um, be or best rated VR games ever so it's a game at the moment it's going to be a bit cheaper I'm going to buy it but at the moment it's it's never on sale so all right and the next award was the labor of love award so that's that this is uh, described as the game has been out for a while and the team is well past the first unveiling of, of other creative baby but being the good parents they are these developers continue to nurture and support their creation this game to this day is still getting new content after all these votes and the winner is grand theft auto 5 
I was voting for it. So my no my nomination was No Man's Sky, but then I thought Grand Theft Auto V is so popular and it gets constantly new DLC, so there was so much content coming for the multiplayer mode especially that it's indeed indeed Grand Theft Auto V uh, deserves it to win. Here a little side story. I was playing it with uh, 3D Vision in the beginning when it came out and uh, it had it had native 3D vision and with all the updates uh, Rockstar completely broke the native 3D vision so it's it's a shame it's a pity and uh, I was a bit upset and for this reason I wasn't playing Grand Theft Auto 5 so much anymore but I have to admit it's definitely one of the best games uh, from the from the recent years and surprise surprise best developer CD Projekt Red so Wolf, you couldn't vote for Wolf, so they took themselves out. That's fair enough. So I was voting for Bethesda because of Skyrim, because of Fallout, because of, uh, yeah, because of Wolfenstein and all the other great Bethesda games. I could also have voted for Ubisoft. I think Ubisoft is also a very, very good uh, company. I could have voted for Rockstar Games, but I have to admit, Having only GTR 5 on, on, on the PC is not a lot. And for this reason, for this reason, I think we should vote for a company that, that, uh, that is doing good for, for the PC market. And yeah, CD Projekt Red won. And I think this is a lot in anticipation of Cyberpunk uh, 2077 when it comes out. So there's a lot of pressure on CD Projekt Red to to really pull it off with Cyberpunk 2077. It's not, it's, yeah, it's it's because the, the, let's say the bar, the bar they were setting with The Witcher 3 is so high and the game was so was so popular in the in the recent years and it, it looked looked amazing it's an amazing game i still like it i was not always getting so warm with the with the with the combat system in the witcher but the rest was absolutely amazing and yeah the bar as i mentioned is so high that that cyberpunk 2077 has to become a spectacular game it has to become an excellent and overwhelming positive game and therefore CD Projekt Red was winning they were not winning for The Witcher 1 or 2 they're not particularly good games they were winning for Witcher 3 and in, in, in anticipation of cyberpunk Square Enix definitely definitely not a developer that, or publisher that I really really would say was doing good recently there were always some some little scandals with their tomb raiders when they're coming out game was uh, released with different price tags capcom capcom was doing well though and now with resident evil so they were very popular on the pc again paradox interactive now i completely forgot what games they were were making <laughs> write it in the commentary section if you know it and then Bandai Namco Entertainment, a classic back from the good old, uh, yeah, <laughs> classic from from Japan. Uh, it's, it's such an old company. It's like Capcom, Square Enix, so Japanese very old companies. And then Klai, very interesting. Digital Extremes, also companies where I do not know immediately a game they were making, but I'm sure there were a couple of really really nice games. All right, and then the best environment. And my vote was also for The Witcher. I think uh, Far Cry 5 could uh, could have deserved it too. It looks really nice. I would also say Dark Souls 3 could have deserved it. It's also a very, very nice scenery environment in general for for a typical Dark Souls game. And Subnautica, Subnautica is also an Impressive since it has this uh, spectacular underworld uh, environment. The underworld, uh, uh, yeah, not not the, the the underwater world. I'm sorry, and I was playing it a lot in VR, and uh, and it was just a great looking to left and right and look around and being really in this feeling to be in this water. So also very 
ice game. But in the end, uh, only one per one game can win, so it has to be the Witch of the Wild Town three. I mean, uh, everyone who bought the the, the the DLCs knows it's it's a spectacular, good-looking game, and I think I did not even finish it yet. So I played like almost 100 hours but I never really finished the Witcher so it's a it's a huge game it's a huge game but I didn't like the level up system so much all right and then the better with friends game so my vote was for Rainbow Six uh, Siege because I would say from all those games Rainbow Six Siege is maybe the best and I've seen how how a lot of my uh, gaming friends on, on Steam love this game where we're constantly playing it, have 100 hours logged in and yeah, how popular it is in the gaming community so pay, Payday 2 is also very popular I have to admit this and then yeah, CSGO Danger Zone I mean it's just a uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive of course it's one of the most popular uh, first-person shooters that exist uh, no one can uh, deny this but yeah I was voting for Rainbow Six Siege and uh, since I also thought the, they were making this event this zombie event with, uh, with a co-op mode uh, which remind me very much of the extin extinction uh, of Ghost of uh, counter uh, sorry of Call of Duty Ghost and uh, yeah this was really fun so absolutely deserved I would say but no surprise, but no surprise. I mean, no surprise that those major titles may be overcooked too. Never played it, so, but those major titles are all here. That's not a big surprise, so in general. And yeah, definitely not Game of the Year uh, Battlegrounds. Nice color if you click on this. Very nice. All right, and then we have the best alternate history game. And the winner is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Is it really an alternate history, an alternate Greek history? Yeah, sure it is. Sure it is. I mean, actually, I thought it's how the history went. I thought that's that's how it how, how it all happened. <laughs> so okay, just kidding. I was voting for Wolfenstein 2, for Wolfenstein series in general, since I think uh, the, the 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 World War Two. The Nazi regime history is, is a very interesting history from the point of view 100 years, almost 100 years later. And, uh, and yeah, and they, 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 they presented in such a cynic, smart, satirical way that I have to say, yeah, it's for me the best way how you can actually present nowadays such a difficult topic and present it therefore in an alternate history and and give the game uh, just just a good time, and not being uh, being uh, being too much, l or not lecturing the gamer too much, or, or or not allowing him to 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 just dive into this very dark times uh, 80 years ago. So okay, Wolfenstein doesn't play 80 years ago. It plays after the after the Nazis took over the U.S. and I think it plays then in the in the 50s and the 60s but Assassin's Creed Odyssey I can live with this I mean I was also voting for this game before and I wouldn't say it's a bad vote and then most fun with a machine so I was nominating actually a table tennis VR game since I had so much fun with the artificial intelligence in this game and people were asking me in one of my last videos how, how is it possible Mr. Orange that you, that you are actually you are nominating a table tennis game I don't understand so where's the machine where's the terminator where's the car and I said yeah it's just the AI well, the AI is not a machine but the AI comes from the PC from the computer so now you could argue every game is most fun with a machine every game is most fun with my computer but I thought it was a funny joke so since I was actually not really there was no other game I wanted to vote for or nominate so to nominate sorry I mean in the end I was voting for Rocket League since of course since of course uh, Rocket League is with machines it's little cast and it's a uh, 
it's even a game that I like uh, like a lot and for a sports game I'm not a big sports game player so but for sports game even though a game that I was playing a couple of hours all right and I think that's it so the voting is over so the Steam Awards in three phases. First phase was the nomination. We all could nominate some games. Second phase was then the voting on the games that got the most nominations. And then the third phase actually, yeah, was the, was the other results of the winners. Uh, not a lot of uh, big surprises. I mean, the most popular games that were brought out on Steam won of course in the future as we all know steam is bleeding a bit out of uh, AAA games a lot of those future awesome possibly awesome games are not on steam anymore they're coming to to battle.net they're going on ex semi-exclusive exclusive to uplay to to the epic game store microsoft store still has a couple of great games and then also the Bethesda launcher, if the Bethesda games like Rage, etc. also are going to be be published exclusively uh, on another launcher. So so it's going to be more and more difficult actually to find, find uh, for the nominations on Steam itself those games. And you can't nominate games that are not on Steam. This is the, actually the problematic point here. Therefore, I would say... Take them, take them not too serious, those Game Awards. They are really just simply Steam Game Awards. And since they're excluding all the other games, ex other exclusive and other launchers, as well as console games. All right. All right, my friends. So thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you had a bit uh, a a good time uh, watching just my opinion about the steam awards so it's not a lot of information in this video in general but i would say i mean it's this is what games is about we just have a little chat and we're enjoying a good time together we're talking about it together this is what gaming is so and uh, yeah best developer cd project red i'm looking forward to cyberpunk 2077 and you can find on my channel a lot of cyberpunk games i have a whole playlist with cyberpunk games that came out coming out so check this out if you if you're also looking forward to and uh, yeah have a wonderful weekend have a wonderful day enjoy your life come back this was uh, would be awesome bye bye